Hello, Easy Nation, and welcome to another episode of the Darth Easy's Movie Anatomy Show. Guys, welcome to another week. Um, <clears throat> it's been a it's been a good New Year so far. I mean, I'm really only for me personally, and this is my perspective because I record these episodes so far in advance that I record these about two or three weeks ahead of the schedule. So who knows how the year is actually going? I mean, really, I don't plan on going to the movies until this movie that's coming out this week. So, it's kind of been an interesting year so far. I mean, January is known for the toilet bow of movie seasons. And this movie came out, the movie I'm reviewing today, or doing the movie anatomy on, Split, which uh, came out in January back in 2017. It was a movie I was just like, eh, this could be good, this could be terrible, We, we'll find, we I guess we'll find out. But Glass, I am so excited. If you listen to the Easy Cage podcast... Me and Rainy Cage, we did a top 10 anticipated films for this year. And Glass was my number two because Split was so good and and I was just so looking forward to Glass. So guys, this week's episode is we're covering the movie Split. And every week I like to give a reason why we're watching the movie. Well, this is an easy reason. Glass is being released this week. And that means I think I should re- I think I should talk about Split. I could talk about Unbreakable, but I've only seen Unbreakable one time. I actually just watched it this week. I actually have a review of Unbreakable right now on my YouTube channel, so you can check out that video right now. But I have done reviews for both Split, and I did a spoilers review for Split. Split was actually the first spoiler review I ever did because I couldn't really talk about the film without going into spoilers. Because if you don't talk about spoilers, then you're like, oh, okay, this is a okay movie. But, you know, I I can't really talk about why I like it. So, yeah. So, guys, uh, so guys, yeah, let's get right into this. Let's uh, watch the trailer for this film. All right. I haven't seen this in a couple years. It's kind of cool revisiting some of these trailers. So it shows the scene with them in the car. I want to know what that dang is he knocks them out with. I mean, uh, I think that would come in handy at work sometimes. If I remember right, this was a pretty good trailer. It's very, it was very intriguing. There's some shots in this trailer I don't remember in the movie. I don't think are in the movie at all. And that creepy smiling. Mac Boy does such a good job. The blonde girl was a girl who was in um, Age of 17 with Hallie Seinfeld. She was her best friend. <laughs> My name's Hedwig. Etc. Etc. The human brain is the most complex oh, object in the universe. This is a good trailer because it makes it look like it makes you think it's a thriller, it's a horror movie, but really it's it is a thriller though. I mean, I'll get into it in a little bit. Okay. This is probably McAvoy's best film he's ever been in because he is so he is so good in this film. This January. All right, that's the Split trailer. So, all right, so let's talk about this uh, film. So, Split was a movie that came out back in January 2017. That was about two years ago, really on the dot. And Split was this it's a story about uh, James McAvoy, who he has multiple person he has person multiple personality disorder. In the movie, he has about 23 personalities in his head, and basically he. Uh, a couple of the personalities have rebelled against the other personalities, and they've basically gone rogue, and they've kidnapped these three innocent, unpure girls, as uh, they say. 
And basically, he he's they're holding him for some reason that I really don't know. I mean, you think of it, it it's basically it's a really cool little psychological thriller film with a guy who has multiple voices in his head. I mean that that sounds like a pretty interesting horror film in its own. But then the film it evolves into this, some other things. There's all these these Easter eggs that I'll talk about in a minute. And the thing about this film is that like you you introduce these characters like McAvoy, he played in all these different personalities, and holy crap, he did such an incredible job in this film. I mean, just the 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 thing when he's using all these different voices. When he, I mean, some of the f- best parts was when he was uh, being uh, Hedwig, the little the little kid. I thought that was one of the most incredible parts of the film. And then also this, and also you see the other actresses, the the female, the, the you have the old woman who's the therapist. I believe she was in some other Shyamalan films, and Shyamalan does make a little uh, appearance in this film as well. Also in this uh, movie, you're seeing you're uh, also in this movie you're seeing Anna Taylor Joy, who's really a uh, breakout star in this film. I mean, she was this and the witch, but this was really my breakout role. And I after I saw this film, I thought, holy crap, that's going to be a star one day. And I thought she was incredible. And the thing about this movie is that even when you look at her journey, she's a character who's been abused her entire life. And she tells the one girl whatever she's get whatever McAvoy's uh Kevin or not Kevin but uh Russell is getting ready to rape or watch uh the one girl dance. She just said, "Piss on yourself. That'll 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 get him away from you." And it works. And this is because she's been in that abusive relationship with her uncle. And the movie it barely teases that and shows you that throughout the movie. And I thought that was a really well job, good job done by was done by Shyamalan. It's Shyamalan's direction is Phil. I mean the movie is so tense, it's all but it also confuses you because you're watching this movie and you're like, okay, this is a very interesting psychological thriller. This guy's got multiple personality disorder. He's uh some of his personality is kinda it's revealing, so it's kind of an inner personality and then, and then but then the movie turns into something completely different. And we're really so let's get right into the end of this film. Well, actually, let's let's hold off the end of the film for a second because I do want to get to the part when the two the two Patricia and Russell they they basically they and Kevin they they all join up the horde this horde alliance and they're able to to summon the beast the twenty fourth personality and it's this thing has like superhuman abilities and you really you're just thinking like okay this is this is getting weird because it, the movie set itself really well into reality and then that happens and then you're just like what 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 am i what the crap am i watching right now and and then uh the beast he basically he's uh he's he's feeding all the 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 girls and and taylor joy is trying to run away and the monster has a the weakness whatever you call the uh whatever he says the name and the beast is getting ready to kill and taylor joy's character but she sees that he sees that she has scars and he says i can't i can't touch you because you are you are pure because brokenness is the, the day that makes true beauty true beauty in, in a person and so he gets away and everyone's looking for this beast and but then now i can get to the part now i can get to the ending of this film so i just watched a breakable for the first time yesterday so i watched split not knowing the idea to watch a breakable so i watched split and then uh, the first time and i saw the diner scene and you see you see uh, Bruce Willis's character of the Unbreakable, David. David is in there, and you're like, "Holy crap! This is connected to the Unbreakable movie, which means this is a sequel, which completely changes this film. This film is not a a suspenseful thriller, psychological thriller movie. It is, but it's also a supervillain's origin story, and that's the thing that's incredible about this film. The second time I've watched it, this is the second time I've watched Split. Because I haven't seen this movie since I see it in theaters. Really liked the movie. It just I haven't really had time to watch it. Been lazy, you know. But I've had this movie for a, a, probably a year on Blu-ray by now. But we, for me, I'm a score junkie. I love a good score, and I li- I really like the Unbreakable score. And then whenever you're seeing uh the the McAvoy talking to himself, 
you're here the you're here the unbreakable score, which tells you it's a little hint that says, yeah, this is unbreakable. This is the city we were in. We were in Philadelphia. The train scene that we saw earlier in the movie that was that it was his father died. Kevin's uh, father died, and it left him with his uh, mob, and completely broke his character. So yeah, this this is a breakable. This is the unbreakable sequel, kinda, and this is split. We are. This is the second film, and it introduces the origin story of the beast, the horde, whatever you want to call it. And it, holy shit, what a twist! Shyamalan, I I give about Shyamalan. I'll give him a lot of shit in a little bit when I get to the star profile, but. Shyamalan is a guy who's known for doing the twisted films. Uh, they were dead all. They were already. He, Bruce Willis was already dead. Uh, Mister uh, Mister Glass was the true villain along. But really, this the twist in this movie that this was connected to Unbreakable might be his best twist ever. And yeah, this is just it's it's just an incredible film. But really, the twist of the movie really changes your outlook on the movie and made me look at this film at a completely different angle the second time I watched it because the first time I watched it, I was enjoyed it. It was a cool little psychological thriller, like those movies, like those little Hitchcock thriller films. But then you look at it, and I was like, no, this is a this is an origin story of a supervillain. And yeah, I just I can't wait for the third film glass that comes out this week. I'm really looking forward to it. All right, let's get to the movie thesis. The thesis statement is you're basically saying if you're at a party and you're talking about Split, this this is what you say about Split. This is the one thing and only thing that's true about the film. And for me, this film answers, this is the comeback story of M. Night Shyamalan, and he answers it with space. Because M. Night Shyamalan, he was considered the next Steven Spielberg. He was going to be the, the next big director, the next Spielberg. I mean, he started off right with Six Sense, Unbreakable, Sides, three great films. Then he had loads of turns with with some other films. But I think The Visit, I didn't really like The Visit, but I could appreciate that it was a good little horror film. And for me, I didn't care for The Visit, but for a horror fan... You would probably enjoy the visit, but for me, I just didn't care for it just because it's just not my uh, type of scenery that I want to watch. But my God, Split completely changed the way I looked at uh, Shyamalan, and I'm looking forward to where he comes next. And yeah, the thesis is this was the comeback story for Shyamalan, and to bring this uh, were the age of comic book films where. X Men came out back in 2000, but Unbreakable came out in November 2000. Unbreakable and X Men kind of led this way to the resurgence of comic books, and in 2017, when this film came released, where we're having crossovers with the Justice League, with uh, DC having their all their movies out, with Marvel with the Avengers and all this out, and for the second film, where if uh, could even be better than all of them, it's uh, pretty incredible to watch. All right, let's get to the wow moment in this film. So I, I my one wow moment, I'm gonna only pick one wow moment this time around because overall this movie is very good. But I mean, the big wow moment probably is at the end of the film. Is when uh, you see Bruce Willis and you realize his world is connected to Unbreakable. The score, using the score from Unbreakable is pretty incredible. But the thing I also will say is when the therapist is trying to stab Kevin it's and the knife just breaks. You're just like, what am I watching right now? It just, It's just pretty cool. Alright, star profile. Now we get to the star profile of these actors. First off, we go to Jace McAvoy. Jace McAvoy is a very good uh, Scottish actor. He's a very good actor. But really, I mean, what he was made famous in... He was made fame in the X-Men series as Charles Xavier. Young Charles Xavier. Basically, young Patrick Stewart. And I thought McAvoy in all these X-Men movies... Apocalypse, he was a little weak here, but that's not really his fault. It's really the fault uh, Brian Seeger is directed. But X-Men First Class and X-Men Days of Future Past, I thought he was great. I thought Days of Future Past, he was an, he gave an Oscar-worthy performance. But Split really changed the way I looked at it because he was able to do all these personalities. And he's talking to himself. I thought he was just incredible in that film. And he's been in some other films too. But James McAvoy, I think Split might be his best film. And yeah, I can't wait for Glass coming out. Anna Taylor Joy, young actress who was made famous in The Witch. Never watched The Witch, not really my scene. But she's kind of getting these things with these horror films. She was in that film last year, Thoroughbreds. I never watched it, but I heard she was good in it. I can't wait to see her. I'm hoping she can get herself in a comic book film. I would love to see her as a uh, Batwoman or something if uh, DC could ever get their shit together. And now we're talking about the uh, the real star of this film. 
M. Night Shyamalan, the next Spielberg, as an article said, and he has such a heart strike. Like I said, he made three great films, but then he also made Lady of the Water, The Happening, Last Airbender, and After Earth. And then The Visit kind of made him, we're like, okay, well, this film isn't so bad. He brought in Bloom House. This film was also produced by Bloom House. So, yeah, that was a very interesting thing. But then a split kind of broke it out, and people were like, we're done with you. We're done with you, Shyamalan. You might as well be the Wilkowski siblings or whatever the hell they are right now. And you're just like, you're, people well, were arguing, like, who's the better director, Shyamalan or the Wilkowski siblings? And uh, after Split, there's no doubt, it might Shyamalan is back. We'll see if he can land the uh, if he can land the landing after after split comes after glass comes out, and then we'll have to see what he does after glass because just because you have one hit does not mean you're back. So yeah, that's that star profile. Let's get to best quotes of the film. Um, I have two quotes I wrote down. The only way we're getting out of here is if one of them decides to let us out. So basically, it's a part of the movie when. And Taylor Joy, she's, she she knows because she's been in this situation her entire life. And her character arc, whenever they they say her guardian's here, uh, she just looks at him. She says, okay, so I just, I, I got out of one prison to go to another prison to go back to that prison I was already in. So, yeah, and then also, um, the you are different from the rest. Your heart is pure. Rejoice. The broken are the more evolved. Rejoice, and that's a good that's a good point of the film is that people who have everyday going for them are kind of they got their lives together, uh, but they really don't know who they really are until you face adversity. And uh, the quote here just basically says that the the ones who are broken, the ones who face loss, who have, have faced tough times, are the people who are more evolved, and that's kind of the point of the movie. All right, guys, so now let's get to the ranking of this film. The ranking is basically I have. I have six ratings I can give a film. I can go from instant classic, fun time, and just a really damn good film. Good time, but not everyone, not one you will watch all the time. A guilty pleasure, an overrated film, and then a film you just want to take out back and hit it with a bat. And what am I going to give this film? I'm going to give this film a fun time, and it's just a really damn good film. It's a good film. It's a film I could watch probably every few months. Because it's so interesting and it's a good psychological thriller and I haven't watched a good psychological thriller in a while. And I, and this kind of gave me a good uh, buck for it. And I, yeah, I, this is a good film and one I'll probably watch again and again and again. Alright guys, so uh, now the only thing left to do is the pitch. Alright, so the pitch basically is where I will tell you what's coming out next week on the Darth Easy's Movie Anatomy. So next week Serenity comes out. No, 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 not the... Uh, not the sequel to Serenity that was directed by Josh Whedon, unfortunately. No, I have... Serenity was a movie that was going to come out last year. It was going to be with Matthew McConaughey and Anne Hathaway. And it just didn't come out. And it's probably going to be terrible. I probably will not be seeing this film. But, doesn't mean I can't give you a good excuse. So this week, next week, I'll be rewatched. I'll be watching Interstellar. A uh, movie directed by Chris Fernella. Both had Matthew McCoy and Anne Halfway in it. So it's a perfect perfect excuse to rewatch those movies. So guys, that is another episode of Darth Easy's Movie and Added. Comment below what you thought of Split. What what I what you thought I said about Split. And comment your own comments below. Just tell me what you thought and keep this uh keep this uh, series going and I can keep uh, doing more and more of these. So guys, until next week. All too easy. Bye.